boom and I nearly fell through my own stage so that's okay uh, I'm back and I still haven't thought of a name for myself but uh, for now I was thinking of calling myself just for this video the Rav Man right this video uh, is uh, to show all my viewers and subscribers um, uh, the evidence in which I was going to show you a long time ago but didn't have the brains to put it together and get organised and all that and I'm still not quite organised we got photos everywhere I did get a lot um, <coughs> a lot of photos for you guys to look at and to show you sort of uh, well, this isn't the real beginning of my uh, story that I want to tell you but it, it is the the beginning that will make more sense and it'll put it all in your minds what what you were watching uh, to me it made sense but when you're on drugs everything that doesn't make sense makes sense and now that I'm totally straight uh, things make too much sense and uh, I'm going overboard with all my evidence stuff so I can show you guys uh, what my madness was about at that time so um, all right, well, let's kick it off, shall we? Um, the eviction at 15 Bruce Highway, Edmonton. How this story evolved, the illegal eviction. How I told you the police kicked me out without a warrant of possession. I did not have notice from the owner. Um, I was forced out at around about, I don't know, 12, 1 o'clock uh, after coming home from doing some work uh, in my aircon scrap business. And I think that's where we'll kick it off. So, um, let me show you a photo which I just lost. Uh, uh, where's that gone? All right, well, that's fucking bloody great, isn't it? Hang on a minute. Here we go again. Ah, right, oh, right, here we go. Yeah, I, I put them over in that pile oh, like a dickhead. All right, so I want to get down to this. I'll show you a clear picture of this one. Now... When I was at 15 Bruce Highway, Edmonton, I had many cars. One of my favourite was my Subaru Outback. And um, so I got some interesting photos of that. Now this is important because it shows you a timeline uh, uh, that I was at 15 Bruce Highway for two years. And um, so, but anyway, this is the uh, car. Uh, yes, I did stack it into the, uh, the river. <laughs> Yeah, well, the ground moved, didn't it? And it was really slippery. So uh, there's me celebrating my crash. Uh, we did get it out. I, I think I've got it in one of my YouTube videos there where that guy's towing me out. Thanks to that guy if you're watching this. Uh, fuck, what would have we done without you? Uh, here's another photo of it. Yeah, I love that car. It was a great car. Uh, there's a good picture there of it. All right, and... Um, Anyway, there you go. This is funny, and it won't happen again if any judges are watching. It will not happen again. I was a naughty boy. I was going to court for driving uh, unaccompanied learner, and I had no way of getting to court. So I drove my car to the courthouse. Sorry. All right. That's, I'm a good boy now. That won't happen again. All right. Now... In relation to that car, so I can show you the timeline. Oh God, here we go again. Right, here it is. Now, that house in question is 15 Bruce Highway, Edmonton. Now, anyone suggesting I was a squatter, have a look up at squatters' rights, adverse possession, and all the legal requirements to move on a squatter, person of adverse possession. But the difference is, I got in contact with the owner, Justin, he was one of the owners, it's a syndicate that owned all the land, uh, he was the one that was talking to me, and he didn't give me any notice, he owns the daycare, uh, uh, daycare, sorry, the nursing home next door, uh, to 15 Bruce Highway, Edmonton, now this is the house in question, and it's my Subaru, oh, and I've got another car there, and I've probably got a few others on the lawn out there, because I was buying and selling cars and doing them up and all sorts of stuff and I had a cut and polish business and all that which I started and I'll show you guys that in a minute.
But does that look like a squatter to you? Like with a trailer full of fucking old air comms and drums, you know, I did a bit of scrap metal and I was just nutting out of business for myself because there was no work available. Uh, COVID-19, uh, I just got released from prison before because of more police tyranny, but we'll get on to those mob later. Declan Dunlop, <laughs> stay tuned. Uh, your, your book two, but story one, right? It hasn't stopped since then, but let's just deal with these Edmonton cops, yeah? Uh, so there's the there's, uh, car, we're just filling it up, got all my toolbox on the front and all that sort of stuff happening. Started that business with no money. Um, the way I did that is when I got out of jail, my kids wanted me to have a job. I didn't want to look like a shit cunt. So, but COVID had broken out and uh, people were losing their businesses um, uh, and it was stay at home, put masks on. So you had to stay at home. Yeah, you had to stay at home. That was like a law thing back then. They, they did that. They said, make it law. You've got to stay at home. Uh, or you're a COVID spreader and all these things. Uh, I don't know. I never really believed in it myself anyway. Uh, but uh, just government shit to, to control people. Uh, so, yeah, well, that's the house there. Now, <clears throat> 15 Bruce Highway, Edmonton, Cairns, if you look it up, just down the road... On the other corner, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> just before you get to the shops, <coughs> is the police station in question. 15, uh, yeah, so where it opposite ends, but on the same block, so to speak. <coughs> now, I've been there for two years. If I was an unwanted guest, uh, they, they did, it's a long story, but we'll get back to that when I do things in more detail. But two years I was there, they passed my place every time. They stopped to talk to other people on my property while I've been there. Um, some of my, well, not friends, let's just say associate dickheads, uh, obviously getting in trouble by law and getting questions out in front of my fucking place, right? So anyway, I had permission to be there uh, from Justin, text messages, all that, blah, blah, blah. Right, now, here's another car of mine. This shows you how long I've been there. And I think I put a video on of me cut polishing that. That's uh, Life Before the Outlaw. Check that video out and you'll see there's that car that I, I, I bought all the parts for to put, put the front end on. See, JJ's Cut and Polish. I did that for me and my son, really. I wanted him to be part of the business. and But anyway, apparently to him I'm a shit cunt. So it was going to be Jaden and Jason's uh, you know, Cut and Polish. But anyway, whatever the fuck. Uh, there it is again, there's all the neons on it. The police currently have this in their impound yard. Oh, they've had it forever now. Um, I've seen it like just before I went to jail. So there it is, that's all on the, in, on the highway. So I'm not hiding, like I'm there. You can, you can clearly see it. This is how good a job I do too, by the way. Look at those headlights, you know what? And that's just after I cut and polished it. Doesn't it look beautiful, you know what? That was me baby, but police have kidnapped that one too, and I dare say I won't be getting that one back. So they, I just put two and a half grand in that, you see that on the video, Life Before the Outlaw, check that one out. Right, now, getting to the RAV, right, my two babies together, right, now, that's my, well, I love that car, but that's my baby there, that's my RAV4, stolen by the Edmonton police. Now, how, you wonder, how did the police steal a car off you? Well, if you remember the video, I can't remember what it was, but I told the police to stay away from this place, stay away from my cars, and goddamn stay the hell away from me. This is the outlaw out. Remember that one? Right, well, three days after that, it's funny because as the cops drove off, after coming out that day, one of the girls, I remember that chick in that car, she turned and she smiled with this little cheeky wave going, hmm, like, I knew something was going on. I'm not stupid, you know. Um, but anyway, that, that's why I kept all the evidence. Alright, so, my mechanic re uh, rang me. Remember I said that in the video? Well, the police said to him that it was stolen. Remember the, the Cairns police come around, uh, so I was told, 
and they spotted a stolen car out the front of uh, Baker's Automotive, right? Now, it had no plates on it, and it's down a side street, this mechanics, and just randomly the highway patrol happens to go down there. If you know cans, it's very odd that that, and the odds that I'd done that uh, video, and three days later this happens, come on, it, it's fucking plain obvious, right? Now, they said the car was stolen. Well, they wouldn't know that unless they checked the VIN number, right? Because there's no plates on it. To check the VIN number, you have to have a warrant served by a judge. You can't just assume that's a stolen car. Because that car that I bought had been sitting dormant for years, yet they say it was reported stolen. I highly doubt that. Right. Now, getting to... Uh, to that so the police go up to I won't say names here yet um, but um, they go up to him and say that car's stolen we're gonna take it or whatever was said but then they gave him now mind you the car's booked into the mechanics in my name now I'll show you that in a minute and um, all my stuff's in that car so if if, if I was a, if it was reported stolen and I was the thief well, it's obvious, wouldn't it be, right? Okay, so, but I never got any phone calls. I still haven't had any calls. No one's talked. The police haven't talked to me about it. Every time I ring up and try and report it stolen and say the police stole it, 131444 hangs up and tells me I've got to go to the police station and talk to them. Well, fuck me. It's all Edmonton police done this. Made me homeless, live in a car, clocked up 44 charge, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so they went to him. They give him... Uh, Property field receipt. It's got the names and everything like that on it, time, date. And apparently they took it to Barren River. I did ring Barren River the next day, it was there. Then I rang up the day after and it wasn't there and they had no paperwork and they said it never been there. Bit odd, Barren River. But we know you're the police uh, tow truck impound yard, don't we? So you're just as corrupt as them. Where's all the paperwork? Now, here's all the money I spent. At Baker's Automotive. Now the police, if it was stolen, would have had all this evidence. I mean, it's, it's fucking plain obvious. I even got photos of it. Not afraid to show anyone because I didn't steal it. Right, so what was that one for? Hang on, let me let you know. Right, that was for $1,298.35. Fuck knows what he done to it because I haven't seen the work done because I haven't seen the car, have I? Maybe they're in on it together, who knows? But we're going to crack that nut open, I can assure you. Baker's Automotive, that's the other receipt. All right, just going to all see that. Oh, I haven't got a really clear camera because the police have stole me fucking laptop and me drone now, but that's another story. So that's for $1,455.98. Get this part. My lawyer sent them a copy of the receipt that I had in my, my carbon copy uh, from my book. I, I had proper receipts for these cars. And you can't see it really good because it is a carbon copy, but that is a legit receipt, date, name, everything. There, right? There it is. It's just another picture of the property field receipt. Uh, here's the guy that uh, I got to put in the windshield because it did have a cracked windshield. He done the work on that one. There's the keys. Yep, there they are. Right, plain as day, isn't it? There they are, keys to me RAV. Oh look, it even says RAV4 on the book on that one, yeah? See? Uh, where's my finger? RAV4. Keys, booklet, everything. There it is. Here it is on the tow truck. There it is. That's it getting it towed. It, it didn't move. How the fuck did I steal it? Alright. Here's the house where I bought it from. Alright. Even got the number plates on it. Alright, that's it. There it is. And there's me with my with my RAV. My RAV4. Right, look, I'll just show you this one again. My two babies together. Right, that one's been uh, thrown away basically by the owners of the property where it was while I was in jail. So while I was in jail, people were throwing all my shit away. I lost all my kids' photos, all my mum and dad's deceased parents. Uh, my, my, my parents, they're deceased. All my memories of my dad and all that. 
thrown in the fucking bin. I'll take out that because that wasn't the police that did that. That was the owner of this property where this is. Right? He did that and you'll be paying for all that too. Uh, and, and this car too that you bloody threw away. Right? You, you got rid of that one too. Right? You owner of that property. <coughs> you'll be paying for that and the memories that are gone that are taken. I was only away six weeks. You, it's against the law to throw away people's property or anything like that, so you'll be held responsible. We know you're a millionaire, so pay up big time, buddy. <coughs> right, so, well, there you go. That's it. Now, I've tried to report this to to all sorts of fucking people, but no one's interested. The, the car's just gone missing. Missing. I haven't been charged for anything. I've been... been exposed to the police i've been in jail i reported to them yesterday still you know what they never even asked me one question not one now if they they took that away for investigation like they said they did because like i said my lawyer sent them all this right they sent my lawyer sent all this two letters demanding the car back their uh response after the second letter there was no response in the first letter the second uh letter they said they gave it back to the registered owner well as you can plainly see in the, that that video that those photos it was unregistered didn't move had to have a lot of work to move had to have new fucking springs and everything because i got the roadworthy guy out twice he even gave me a hundred dollars back because i shouldn't have had to get him out twice and have two lots of work done to the fucking car could should i i'm not going to name him because he done the right thing and gave me my hundred bucks back but uh you know um, Baker's Automotive, you haven't done the right thing really, have you? You, do, you say you've done the work. How do I know if you're not coordinating with the police? You're the one that got the property field receipt, not me. Usually you get one of those when property's seized, and if it's not claimed in three months, you can get it back. So where's my fucking RAV4, Edmonton corrupt fucking police, who are trying to fucking put me in jail for your fucking illegal eviction? And, uh, well, I want fucking answers. Right? And I want my fucking Subaru back. I want me fucking drone back from them Tully fucking corrupt cunts down there that are probably cahooting with you. No doubt they are, considering I had Innisvale Court and everything. These are all tied up. Because now you've taken Jonas's car. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Right? You've taken that down to what, Brisbane? He went down. You wouldn't even tell him where it is. Now, there's something fishy going on with you bloody cops. And yet, here I am, fucking looking at jail, have to report to you fuckwits, right, three times a fucking week, right, jump through hoops, while you go home in your nice little fucking uniforms and fucking back to your families and shit, and I've been dealing with you cunts for years, you've been doing this to me, I haven't had a fucking break, have I? You won't let me work, you don't let me stay anywhere. And everywhere I go, you just fuck it all up. It's all been used. You fucking corrupt Edmonton fucking police. That's why you didn't want me out of jail. That's why you are going so hard at me. I told you, when I fuck, I will never quit. I will never fold. I will make sure your fucking tyranny comes to a right fucking end. I'm not fucking joking. When I say that you owe me fucking six digits... Fuck, man, you threw away my life. How many fucking years I've been at this now? Fighting you cunts. I'm not scared. I've had everything taken away from me. Right? My kids lost respect for me. All these things. They don't even talk to me. I don't see my grandson and all that. I've lost all my dad's photos and and fucking everything. I've never been able to be stable and, 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 and continue to do my businesses, which are always fucking really fucking productive businesses they make fucking good money that's how i pay for fucking burning and i got some debts out there too but uh, i've got to cover them but how am i going to do it now when i've got to report three times a week i've got a dog still in the pound i've got to get out thank you to those guys down in tully who are looking after him you're lovely people bless you and thank you so much for looking after buddy um we'll give you a special shout out later on because it's not the right video for that. Um, but if it wasn't for them, I would have lost Buddy. And the cops would have, that would have been through the cops. They don't care about my life. 
They don't care about my possessions or what I've had. And they're all protected by each other. And that tyranny fucking investigation done by the ethical standards command fucking Muppet. You're just as corrupt as them, if not more. Because you're covering their fucking bullshit. And you're, you're supposed to be fucking investigating. Not one of you cops have done fuck all for me. Right? So, you made my life hell. So... Enjoy the fucking videos because now I'm straight as a fucking die. You can test me anytime you fucking like because, hey, I'm not going to give you a fucking inch of a chance of me to fuck up, yeah? All right? Because I'm coming for you, cunts. I want to make sure you pay for everything I've fucking lost. And this beautiful ring I've had evaluated. So this is just for you. It's five grand's worth of fucking ring. Know what? I stick my f middle finger up at you, fucking Edmonton police. And, uh, well, I'm coming for you. We're going, we're going to get you investigated properly. Know what? By an independent fucking inquiry. Don't you worry, I've already got the wheels in motion and talk the talk. So, all the evidence is here. So, this is it, your turn. You've got to be held accountable. You broke the law. You broke your what, what you took an oath for to protect and serve the community during a COVID bullshit. You kicked me out of the house for a fucking corrupt uh, property developer who didn't give me notice. And then you enforced a law that shouldn't have been a law. It was a civil matter. And you threatened me with criminal to put me in jail. Isn't that ironic? You threatened to lock me up if I didn't leave the house that day. Then you forced me into a car, I, 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 I had nowhere to live, 40, 44 charges, I'm paying for it, I've got nine months suspended sentence, spent six months, thousands of dollars, and I've got to pay thousands more bail for not guilty for, for the other driving because I had to rush to hospital, and that's all on video too, or not on YouTube yet, but it will be. You're fucking corrupt, I'm not that drug fucked idiot anymore, everyone can see that. I'm going to show you some more evidence, more stuff. Guys, thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you to all my viewers that are viewing, whoever you may be. Some of you might be the police waiting for information. Well, fucking here it is. I'm Jason Taylor. And uh, I enjoy doing these videos. You've given me a reason to live, to take out all the tyranny. In fact, I'm thinking of getting my journalist license, my press license. Yeah, doing something like Rebel News in fucking uh, Melbourne, something like that, but on a local level, dealing with corrupt uh, local law enforcement. That's a new career move for me. That's why I have the Cairns Outlaw at gmail.com. Anyone got any problems with local law enforcement or anything like that, any corruption you see, you can contact me through there. No, actually don't. I've got to set up a whole new bunch of bullshit because the cops have got my laptop, it's connected to my phone. They're probably watching everything and taking down notes and everything like that on my, because it's all connected. I've got to disconnect, haven't had time, but just thought of it then. But anyway, peace out. Uh, love you all. Hope you enjoy the new videos. And uh, let's uh, get these corrupt tyranny police that get away with things all the time. Let's not let them get away with this all the time. I'm one that's going to stand up if no one else will. Means going to jail again, well, so be it. But now you know, if I'm inside, it's because of police corruption. And anyone up there that I'm going to complain to up the top here, well, that's what you're there for, to watch over the cops. If I make the complaint, you've got to investigate. It's not a one-sided tyranny investigation where you assume and look at body cameras i want those body cameras too because it's going to show some stuff to these people up there if they go missing it's in your letter yeah i still got it so all right this is jason taylor and uh i'll see you all later